we are back at one of my favorite places on earth, Wittmoskloof. We've had some incredible adventures here over the past few years, and those of you that have seen some of the earlier Oxwagon Diaries episodes will know that this is a shooter's paradise. The Wittmoskloof Conservancy is a 50,000 hectare piece of land in the Eastern Cape of South Africa, home to many species of game animals and birds, but also home to many problem animals like monkeys, baboons, and ground squirrels. We are hoping to help with this problem. Over the next few days, we'll be using both the air guns and the powder burners and doing a bit of varminting, and you're going to be coming with us. But first, we have some unpacking and settling in to do. There you go. Oh, it's nice and cool. At the moment, there's absolutely no wind, and that's something I don't get to see every day. So, I think what we're basically going to do in these next few hours now before it starts getting dark, I don't think there's really enough time to go do uh, some serious hunting now. So, we're going to just go down the road where there's a nice open area, and I've brought a few loads that I want to try out with the new Hornady ELDX bullets in my 260, and I'm basically going to do a very quick optimal charge weight test to see if um, those loads work and if they do I'm probably going to use those loads for the next few days simply because variety is the spice of life and then we definitely want to focus on some air rifle hunting over the next few days. Anton who owns the farm here he says that there are a lot of rock pigeons that are living on his roof now and are really kind of bothering him in the, in the evenings so he says um, it'd be great if I could come one evening with the air gun and just try and shoot a few rock pigeons off his roof which I would love to do. It's actually been a long time since I've done a pigeon hunt um, and then obviously the monkeys, uh, he told me that there are a massive problem at the moment. Um, we actually saw some, some Franklin on our way in and uh, Franklin eggs, obviously they lay the eggs on the ground, they're really easy for the monkey, monkeys to get to so we're going to take the impact um, as well as the rifles as well but hopefully try to get some monkeys with impact as well and it should be great. Mr. Projectionist, stop the show. Here's great news you ought to know. Well, fortunately in South Africa, it's not like the US where we need a special concealed carry permit. If you have a firearm license, you're allowed to conceal carry. So it comes in very handy when you're in an area with baboons. You can just walk around, it doesn't really get in the way. As soon as you see baboons, you just quickly rip out your firearm and you're ready to go. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> well, right on cue, the baboons rock up and suddenly we are all scrambling to get set up for a long shot. Luke sets up his rifle and I feed him information about range, incline, density, altitude and wind. And it's not long before crack rings out through the valley. I think I hit it. Baboons have been called the ultimate varmint. On this farm, they not only damage property, but they actually kill the lambs just yes. to drink the milk from their stomachs. Jackals and lynx kill for food, but baboons kill for fun. And so, in turn, it brings the farmers a lot of joy to see them gone. They are incredibly elusive though, so when an opportunity presents itself, you need to make the most no of it. No wind. This shot was incredibly close. In the replay, we can see that if the baboon didn't take a step upwards, he would have been dead. We can also see the bullet curling in from about half a kilometer. It was very close to being a perfect shot. We were kind of hoping for a nice relaxed evening from here on, but okay. chaos ensues as Luke makes a little mistake. Okay, update. That's Luke's car. It has Luke's keys locked inside it. There is currently no way to get into the car. There's no cell phone signal here and there's no spare key for hundreds of kilometers. So I don't know if you can see that little white speck on the hill. I'll zoom in there. That's Luke trying to find some signal. So, I don't know how successful he's going to be, but 
it may be that the only option is to shoot a hole through the window. And in that case, I've offered to cover the cost of it because I'm sure the video might go viral and um, help to cover the cost of doing something that drastic. If it doesn't go viral, I would appreciate a donation <laughs> now that I've made the offer, but hopefully we can, we can make a plan that doesn't require smashing the window. I've made a colossal mistake. I've locked my keys in the car, but more importantly, I've locked my ammunition in my car. So I've got seven rounds here and one in my gun. So we're going to have to make a plan here, whether I break my window or shoot my window or what. I need my ammunition. As always, I said, I'm going to break my window. I'm going to make a place where I can ride to that. And as we make our rubbers in good shape, we make our rubbers in good shape. We make our rubbers in good shape. We make our rubbers in good shape. Yeah. All right, so I'm not very experienced at carjacking. So in the quest for more ammunition and for stuff to sleep in tonight, I'm going to have to break my window <laughs> on my car. So, yeah, I suppose there's nothing more we can say. For science! <laughs> for ammunition! Whoa, I haven't even videoing yet. What on earth is that made of? Okay, tell me when you're ready. <laughs> Goodness. Good job, VW. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> what on earth? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As the old saying goes, a boer mark a plan, and eventually Anton shows up and shows us how it's done. If the baboons get in my car now, that would just be the end. <laughs> so what did you learn from that? I learned that I'm not very good at carjacking and that I must not put my keys in my rifle bag and lock them in the car. <laughs> <laughs> with that drama over and done with, we finally get the chance to head out for a quick OCW test before the light disappears. Right, so we've just had some drama today with having to break into Luke's car and all kinds of interesting things like that. Um, but it's been a successful hunting day so far nonetheless considering the time we've had we've got two monkeys down and a baboon um, but now we're getting really serious uh, starting to become nice and cool now in the evening we've got good lighting with no glare from the sun so we're going to do a very quick optimal charge weight testing with some new uh, loads that i have these are hornady eldx bullets 143 grain in my 260 remington and initial testing just when I was doing max charge weight testing shows that they're very accurate out of my gun but I'm not 100% sure about that yet so we're going to do a very basic uh, optimal charge weight test just with a few different loads to see if we can get a fairly accurate load and if we can then I'm going to load a few more of these for the next few days. So I've got uh, loads going up here five different charge weights in 0.3 grain increments from 38.1 to 39.3 um, it's not a very uh, detailed optimal charge weight test but it's just enough um, just with like 15 shots or so just to get a, a basic idea of where I can find the closest accuracy node um, so as I said it's quite it's very basic but it's just temporary so we can get a load for the next few days um, if you don't know what an optimal charge rate test is, I'll put a link in the video description to a very long, very detailed video when I was doing a charge rate test for my burger bullets, and you can check that out. As you can see, I have got a beautiful new uh, Night Force scope on my rifle. This is a Night Force ATAC R5-25. It's a first focal plane scope, and I've got the units in mils, so uh, it's what I'm used to uh, in terms of the units and the glass is incredibly good better than anything I've experienced before and that makes shooting like this an absolute dream it's uh, it's easy to see through I can see my, my hits on target there even in this low light at, at 150 meters um, so there's no need to walk down there and, and check my, my points uh, my hits on the target there which is fantastic um, it's reliable which means over the next few days of hunting i know that whatever i dial it's going to stay there i know that i don't need to re-zero the gun after getting slight bumps 
and it just it's a real confidence booster so i'm ex incredibly glad to have the scope um, and i'm sure we'll see it in action a lot over the next few days we're on to the next load now 38.4 dead center well, the test gave us the results we needed, and as the light starts to disappear, we make our way back to the camp for a meal with the Nell family. This is the family that lives on this farm. They are incredibly hospitable, and tonight they're treating us to a juicy leg of lamb. As the night draws to an end, we are grateful for warm fires, good food and good company. And we can go to bed with a full stomach, ready for an action-packed day of monkey shooting the next morning. <laughs> 